we put on the let me put on the recording. All right. So my name is Otone Omoni Paul. I'm the founder of Elite Accounting Professional Service. And one of the reasons why this institute was founded is to bridge the gap between theories and practice. And it's our delight that we are organizing trainings like this to build professionals, to equip professionals with the necessary skills, experience needed for them to excel at their very place of work. And so it is this delight that we're able to organize this start training because I've gotten a lot of um, feedbacks from colleagues that, um, you know, they're having challenges around tax. You know, tax is a very wide um, profession and uh, you need to be very, very equipped before you can, you know, launch yourself into such a such profession. And so we started this training last week. We started this training last week. And um, for those of us that were present, I believe we, we enjoyed the training last week and we got value. And I want to believe that this evening we are going to get much more value because um, we have in our midst a very, uh, it's a privilege that we'll be having such person taking us um, this evening. Um, his name is um, Mr. Omolaja Alaba. Mr. Omolaja is a tax professional. Like when I mean tax professional, that is his core discipline. That is what he specialized in, you know, tax and everything about tax. So it's a privilege that we'll be having Mr. Omolaja taking us this training tonight. But before we go to the training, before we start, I would like to read the profile of um, Mr. Omolaja very quickly. Okay, um, I'm sharing my screen now. Can everybody see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? Yes, yes, you can see it. All right, thank you very much. So um, I'll just read um, about uh, Mr. Molaja. So we'll have a few uh, knowledge about him. Mr. Molaja is an accountant with well over 14 years experience working in various sectors and finance and tax expertise. Building his role from audit training with Chetel Associates in, 2019, in 2009 and also as a tax assistant with FMC Advisory. He has ranges of experience with broad consulting experience and also expertise in audit, tax audit, and investigation, business process implementation, business strategy, and management consulting. Mr. Omolaja Alaba worked in audit firms, trading, transport and logistics, marine, oil and gas energy companies over the last 10 years. He has experience and he has excellent interpersonal skills and is used to working with employers from various varieties of background. He attended the University of Adoekiti, where he obtained his BSc in accounting in 2007. He also has a master's in legal studies, tax and interpretation from the Lagos State University, Lasso, and an MBA degree in finance from European Business School of Luxembourg. For over six years to date, with a major oil and gas marine firm, he worked as the finance manager and also the group tax manager. Mr. Molaja is a qualified member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, and is also a qualified member of the Institute of Chartered Institute of Taxation, CITN. He has handled numerous tax audit engagements for several companies, both at the federal and at the state level. Mr. Molaja Alaba has an excellent interpersonal skills and is passionate of adding positive value to growth. He is married and blessed with two beautiful kids. 
ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege that we'll be having Mr. Omolaja taking us this training tonight. Mr. Omolaja, are you with me? Can you hear me loud and clear, sir? Can you hear me? Mr. Omolaja, over to you, sir. Mr. Amalaja, can you hear me? Please, you can unmute yourself and talk. Uh, Mr. Molaja, can you hear me? Are you there? Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, not in again. All right. Okay, so just um, hold on. Um, he will join us shortly. I think the network um, kicked him out. He's going to join us now. So please, as we start the training, if you have any question, just like what we did last week, please pen down your question. We are going to take every question at the end of the at the end of the training. So if there's anything you seek clarification for, just pend it down. We'll give room for opportunities for everyone to ask their, their question. All right. Mr. Malaja, are you there now? Okay, let's hold on, please. Let's hold on for some minutes. He's going to join us shortly. Mr. Malaja, are you there now? Can you hear me? Please unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Please, let's try to mute ourselves, please. Mr. Malaja, are you there now? Okay, just hold on. Um, he's going to join us shortly.
Uh, Mr. Malaja, can you hear me now? Are you there? Let's hold on, please. It's, it's joining shortly. Can you hear me, Mr. Molaja? Are you there now? Yes, I'm back. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the wait. I'm sorry. It's the network. All right, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Pardon me, please. Over to you, sir. Okay, can you please let me share the, your, the slide from your side? When I need you to share my own slide, to allow me to share my slide, I will let you know. Okay, all right, no problem. Thank you. Okay, everybody, good evening. Once again, my name is Omolaja Alaba. I would like to, like Mr. Omoni rightly said, I wasn't on the platform on the platform when he read my profile, but though I understand that he must have done that. And I I want to also apologize for the network inconsistency. It's not from my own side. And also I want to comment, please can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. And I also want to comment the the Mr. Omoni and other group members who has been running this platform and this training. And I want to say that, give you kudos for the good job you are doing. And I will always li also like to commend Mr. Buyiga, Bimiga, who handled the training last week. And I want to say that, commend his effort and his delivery and say that he has actually done and uh, explicitly discuss most of the things I want to talk about. But ir irrespective of that, I'll still come up with something that I can add up to what he has done. And I also will like to apologize that we didn't start on time and to say that, um, we are together and I hope that we will get for why we are here. Thank you. Now to the discourse. Hello. Hello, you're here? Hello. Hello, sir, we can hear you, sir. Okay. Okay, audibly. Okay, I think I saw yes, the chat that is saying my audio is inconsistent. That's why I have been saying hello all the while. So please let's go together and um, in the discourse. The topic before me is taxation of SME business in Nigeria. And as we all know that there is no way we will talk about taxation of SME, the acronyms, small, medium, small and medium enterprise. Some call it small and medium size enterprise. Some call it small and medium scale enterprise. There's no way we talk about it without first talking about what it is all about. Generally, there's no definition for that term, SME. 
if you bring 15 people or 20 people to talk about SME, they will say something different in the same way. Some will define SME, well, from my own side, I define SME by the terms, by its term. And I would like you to take keynote of the of some words. And it is on it we'll be building our discourse. The first, by that definition that I penned down, I say is simply in the in the in the normal simple parlance, small and medium sized enterprise. Like I said, some we say small and medium scale. A small business is a small business with an independently or privately as a differently owned and operated company with fewer employees or less revenue than other type of businesses within the business industry, particular industry. Now, if you take note of the word independent, we could say it is solely. And if you can key into that, you understand, you will bring something out that, okay, this could mean a sole proprietor. Now, if you go further, differently, from the word differently or privately, it could mean joint, partnership. So I want you to note that word. We'll be expatiating further on those words. We're breaking it further into in the discourse. Now, however, to help you in discussing what SME and understanding what SME business could just be, because we can't discuss on this if we don't understand what it means, what it is. Now, some people will tell you that by they talk to you that SME, they are defined by their size. They say it is one with fewer employees. So when they tell you, ah, small, small, I work in a small scale firm. What it means to you is it could be two or three people with the director, with the owner. It could be that it is generally few employees. So also by their annual turnover threshold, We'll talk more about that as we go in the discourse. By their working capital, by their assets, by revenue, and by their ownership type that I've discussed above. I ask that I ask you to take a keynote of. Also, we could say by we could talk about the context of its economic environment, where it operates from. Okay, some businesses are small because their products and services impact only a small pool. Where all the above is not, is not really depicted, when you don't have available information, you can just look at their business demography and you could form an opinion. This one is small scale. Now, I want to move further in, in line with what I've discussed with you above that if you if you have ever reviewed or go through the Company Allied Matter Act and how it described SME, you discover that it described SME as a private company. Now it didn't talk about whether it is solely or it's an enterprise or limited. It just generally uh, gave a description of SME as a private company. Having an annual turnover and net asset value of no more than 120 million. Are you there? Annual turnover of 120 million and 60 million in net assets, respectively. It goes further to say that it has no foreigner as its member. 
if it's solely owned or privately owned, uh, uh, privately owned as a limited, register as LLC, it should not have a foreigner as its members. And when the company has a share capital, it is expected that the directors hold at least 51% of the share capital. That is to tell you that it must be indigenously owned. Now, there's a deviation from the definition of CAC, and I want us to pay attention. Now, nonetheless, I want you to note, it is worthy of note to know that this is at a variance. There's a deviation with the definition as provided in the Finance Act 2019 and 2020. This section of the Finance Act, section 23, subsection 1, N, of CIT as amended, where it exempts the profit of a small company. It exempts the profit of a small company in a relevant tax year of assessment from company income tax. The exemption is applicable only on companies with gross turnover not exceeding 25 million at the end of the financial year. I want you to note the deviation from the Finance Act and what CAC is talking about as we, as we continue with the discourse. So in my notes, I said, before I go too deep in the discourse, permit me to quickly talk about the relevant tax authority and their jurisdiction. The reason why I want to first talk about this is for us to understand as we move further in the discourse. If you note, from the above definition, where we talk about SME being independently owned or privately or different or, 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 or differently owned as an as a joint venture or partnership partnership, it falls under this depending of their on their ownership structure. You will understand the relevant tax authorities and the jurisdiction they fall under. Now, the Nigerian tax fiscal regime is based on statutes and practices supported by the FIRS guidelines and case law. Now, to deviate a bit, in the course of our class, I will be taking us through some case laws. And I will always like you also to join me as we go deep into those case law. Now, somebody asked a question in the last class from Mr. Bemiga, that do we have a tax tribunal? And I'm so I'm happy that Mr. Benga could explain to him and even even just go further to tell him about what happened in their own company and how we handle that. I will move further. I will move further to explain further in in response in recourse to what Mr. Benmiga has done to show us some relevant case, tax cases, case laws, as I have read to us here. Now, this set of statutes are amended from time to time, via the Finance Act and Gazettes, published from time to time in the government official Gazettes. Now, it vested the administration of tax in the FIS and the relevant tax state IRS. What I mean by IRS is Internal Revenue Service of every state, IRS. Please, in the course of this discourse, please, I want us to note these acronyms so that we don't, we will be able to understand what we are discussing. Sorry, I would like to ask again if you are still hearing me, please. 
Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. Jesus. Now, I would like to say that it is key to remember that in Nigerian tax space, please note this place, that in Nigerian tax space, registered companies exist as a limited liability company or as a registered business name, RBN. Now, you will see a company, Unjideka and Sons Enterprise. You don't need to ask for that. It is under, categorized under registered business name. When you hear names like Omoni and Sons, you should know that it's, a, it's under registered business name. When you see names like Ventures, Omolaja Ventures, it is under registered business name. And I, from that structures of ownership and registration, you will be able to understand the relevant tax authority and the jurisdiction they fall. And I would like to digress a bit, please. But before I digress, I would like to just finish this part. Now, this company as listed above, the limited liability company, are assessed to tax in different ways by different RTAs. What does RTA mean? It means relevant tax authorities. Relevant tax authorities. Please pardon my uh, acronyms. It is while I was trying to prepare for this. So relevant tax acronyms. No, sorry, relevant tax authority. While the LLC is a limited liability company, is assessed to tax by the FRS, the registered business name is assessed to tax by the relevant state IRS. Don't forget, internal revenue service. So I want to digress a bit. I just want to take us into something. I understand that in further discourse, in other tra further trainings, other, other uh, trainers that will come on board will be able to discuss that. But I want to discuss, digress a bit to discuss something at this point. Now, I want us to understand and to note that tax is jurisdictional. And when you hear the word jurisdictional, it is country based under a limited liability company or registered business name in Nigeria, it is state based under registered business name. So if you register your company as a business name in Lokoja, Ogi State, you are responsible to tax in Lokoja by that state tax authority. If your business premises is in Lagos, you are assessed to tax in Lagos. Now, for a limited liability company, if you look at the discourse, you will, you will see the topic that it is taxation of XME in Nigeria. Now, the word Nigeria has actually given us an understanding of jurisdiction. We are going to keep on, we are going to continue to talk about the tax session of SME as it relates to Nigerian tax laws. But my deviation is coming from the word jurisdictional. Now, some companies 
that operate the multinational structure. Hello. Can you please vote? Hello. Hello. Can you please mute? Thank you. Now, by jurisdiction, some organizations have a multinational structure where their head office is in other in other country. Now, they are going to their business is going to fall under what we call international tax. They look at the legal provisions of different countries that relate to the cross-border transactions they do. And it is under these that we have topics like transfer pricing, where we talk about, where we talk about double taxations, where we talk about, where they discuss residency more. Who is at, who has the power to tax in that transactions? And where we have taxation of associated companies. Now, under that jurisdiction um, position that I'm discussing about, we have the issue of a lot of issue came up, which was clarified through the tax law where we have the issue of permanent establishment, SEP, where sustainable economic presence was talked about, which gave more clarity to the definition of the term residence, which was able to talk more about movable property, business profits, and profit from income of businesses that operate in specialized industries, like marines, like aircrafts, and the likes. That's the division I want to have. Now for the course of this class, we are only talking about SME as it relates to Nigeria and the Nigerian tax law. Sorry for, for the digression. So let's move to so the business structures and the relevant tax implication. As we have earlier mentioned that the SME business in an independently or privately owned and operated company with fewer employee or less revenue than the other type of business within the business particular industry. A typical SME is assessed to tax base, tax based on, on its types. Please let's know that word. I've been mentioning it, I've been repeating it. A typical SME is assessed to tax based on its types, which are one, sole proprietorship business. When we hear the word sole proprietorship on the street parlance, we hear somebody say, woman band, woman mupo. Somebody will tell you that it's a one man business. When you hear such word, you should know that that's categorized under sole proprietorship business. The other one. Hello, Hello please. Uh, can can you mm -hmm. please Hello, please. Can you please mute? Thank you. Please. Thank you. 
Now, the second one is partnership business. I'll be discussing it. I've highlighted it down. I'll be discussing it further. I just want to tell you. Now, the third one is limited liability company. The fourth one is incorporated trustees. There are different class of businesses, enterprise that falls under incorporated trustees. And I'll be taking time to talk about them. A sole proprietorship business is where the proprietor is the sole owner and has unlimited liability. One is the sole owner. Has unlimited liability. He has no legal entity. He's the sole decision maker. He can just wake up and wind up. I'm not going to work today. I'm not doing my business again today. He can make that decision. He does not have to call for a board meeting. Before he can sack any staff, he can take some decisions. So when we see this, we understand that when we see all that I've depicted and I've talked about, okay, is the sole owner. He has unlimited liability, doesn't care, no legal entity, structures, sole decision makers, he takes decisions at will. He comes up today and says, we are doing this. He comes up tomorrow and says, no, it's impracticable. That shows is a sole proprietorship business. And when filing this, when filing, he files personal taxes. He also deducts, the sole proprietors deduct most business losses from returns. Also, they do not pay corporate income tax in Nigeria. Please note, a sole proprietor does not pay corporate income tax in Nigeria. Instead, what they pay is PIT, personal income tax. And it is regulated by the Personal Income Tax Act. The Personal Income Tax covers the individual earnings, that is, Pray from work, from the work he carried out, and also earnings he made as a sole, sole trader. Now, let's go further in talking about the chargeable income of a sole trader. They derive income from employment from the trade they carry out. From the trade they carry out, sorry, and, the, and their personal businesses they do by the sides. Also from vocations, vocational jobs, like, like e.g. Mr. Money, Mr. Molly he works, and also, if you want to file your, if you want to register your company with CAC, if you want to do carry out business analysis, if you want to do some other carry out some financial management uh, functions. He does that by the side. The income as a business owner, as a sole trader that he makes from that angle will form part of his chargeable income. Vocations. And if there are any other source of income, 
okay, some of some business owner could buy a car by the side and use it for rentals, which is totally different from the source of business. From that global income, total income that he made as a sole trader is chargeable. Are we together, please? Hello, I want to get a feedback. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the course of this training, I'll be asking some relevant questions so I will know if we are together. I'll, to know if we are catching up with this discourse. So going further, we're talking about allowable deductions. Now, example of deductible business expenses, which are enshrined, like I told you, the act that regulates a sole proprietorship business is personal income tax. As enshrined in the Personal Income Tax Act, allowable deductions include interest on money a borrow for business purpose. Let me deviate a bit. I have been part of a tax investigation where the client had borrowed, um, took a finance lease. And the interest on that finance lease, I'm digressing a bit. And the finance, the interest on that finance lease ranges to over 200 million. And the client was asked to come and pay 10%. 10% we told him on that amount of money. Now, we splitly went into the tax law. Well, in the course of the Finance Act, it has regulated it. At the time, there is an expli explicit, um, explicit, explicit introduction into the law. Once it is a finance lease coming from a borrower, a, a lender that is outside the shores of the country, is outside the shores of Nigeria. FRS or LRS, depending on your structure, we assess you to that amount of interest on that money, on that amount borrowed, on that list, finance list. I will, in the course of this class, I will take you further into that finance act that deal with it and the previous tax law that talk about this section. Let's continue. Rent and premium payable on land or building occupied for the purpose of acquiring the income. Rent and premium that he pays as a business owner. That's why you see some FRS they come or LRS they come for tax. They want to know who owns 
the building you occupy in the course of tax audit. They ask you, can we see your rent agreement? If you say it is owned, they want to know. Is it, does the building belong to your director or to the company? Asking that question is relevant for the course of assessing withholding on these amounts. If a company, a CIT company, company, a, sorry, a limited liability company rents a property for business, Mr. Omoni, a limited liability company rents a company, rents a building, sorry, from Mr. Omoni, the company we pay will be assessed to a withholding tax. And upon payment, if it is charged in the cost of the, if it is inclusive, Mr. Omoni, who took that money, will remit same on behalf. But if the organization has is an agent and is, a, is, is among the set of people who could deduct that amount, he will tell that amount if it is inclusive. He withhold it from the source. In the course of payment, since he's the, if he's the one paying out to Mr. Money now, he deducts from source. But if it is exclusive, if it is exclusive, he, he will bear the payment since Mr. Money is not charging him for the withholding. He will self charge and remit accordingly. Now, it will remit same to Mr. Money LIRS account since he's a sole trader. Don't forget. But if Mr. Money is leasing the property out in his company name, they are remitting it. To the covers of the FIRS. Please take notes. Repairs and maintenance expenses. We are moving further, please. Repairs and maintenance expenses for the premises, plant, and machinery used in generating income. Now, most business operators. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Money, I, I, I'll keep on using your name. <coughs> Mr. Money Enterprise no problem, has um, a business premises. And in that premises, he also has plants and machineries, generators, ACs, he has various sets of machineries, pull, pull van, pull cars for staffs. And so far he bought those machinery, please take note, Mr. Money bought those plants and machinery, he obtained it for the purpose of generating income. He's using it in the course of his business. It will be assessed to tax. So we are talking about a lot, uh, we are talking about the, sorry, Mr. Money. Hello, Mr. Money. Yes, I'm with you. Okay. Can you please help me scroll up? Okay, here. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, thank you. We are still talking about the deductible, allowable deductible deductions. On these repairs and maintenance expenses, for the business, for the premises and the business is carrying out, it is part of uh, the means of generating income. It is used in his business. Mr. Omoni, you will be assessed to tax, depending on who is doing business with. Now, if Mr. Omoni, his set of cars, pool cars, is maintained by Elizade Motors, Elizade Limited, or Mr. Benigar Limited, we understand that. Upon payment, Mr. Uh, Mr. Money is doing business as an enterprise with a limited. Upon carrying that business, carrying out that business, he is to be told. We told him, depending on the business is carrying out, as in the company is carrying out business with, it will be accessible to withholding on these repairs and maintenance. Now, I will deviate a bit. Mr. Gbemiga was able to tell us about the deductions applicable in this aspect. So I'm not going to go back to discuss it, but I would like you to get a copy or go online and listen to it. If you ask the management of the platform and this training, they will make one available to you. So, like I said earlier, if Mr. Money is doing business with a limited company, the withholding deducted and remitted on their account. If Mr. Money is doing a business with a fellow enterprise, on that repairs and maintenance, LIRS, when they come, they will, they will be assessed to tax on that <laughs> particular transactions. Are you with me, please? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Bad yeah. debts. Bad debts. Subscriptions. How much is that? Now, subscriptions also provided they relate to the business or profession. If it does not relate to the business, it is allowable. Now let's move forward to payment and filing of returns. Now, it is, it is worthy of note that Nigerian practice is a progressive system of tax with a graduated rate of taxes as incomes it increases. In the course of our, de of our demonstration, I will take you further to demonstrate how you can calculate this. And I will demonstrate how you can be able to as a generate, once you calculate your payee, once you calculate the applicable uh, taxes at this range that is applicable to this uh, particular uh, business type, we will go to the LIRS as in Lagos 
state inland revenue service platform. That is eTax. I will demonstrate, we will log in there and I will demonstrate how you can get it done. Once you are able to first calculate and to first put the, in schedule the withholding that you have deducted and you want to remit. I will show you in the course of this training. Are you with me? So other forms of taxes paid are withholding. VAT, capital gains, gain tax, stand duties, pension contribution, and so on. I will discuss further in the course, I will discuss further on this, why I put pension contribution there. Because some people, when they, when they go back to read these other forms of taxes, why did you put pension under taxes? I will explain further. Please. Let's continue together. So applicable tax rates that I talked about earlier is depending on the sole trader income level and what tax bracket it falls within. It may be subject to the following tax rates. We understand 7%, 11%, 15%, 19%, and 24%. A little further in the presentation, we will do a detailed practical illustration of a payee table, tax table, with rates and deduction amounts for your reference. Now, I highlighted some steps that could help you when we start the demonstration, and I would like you to jot it down or to note it. One, you need to get a salary breakdown. What do I mean by the salary breakdown? Hello? Hello? Hi. Okay, I, I, want just, I just want to know if we are together, please. Yes, sir. Steps to calculating payee tax payable. Don't forget, payee means pay as you earn. Pay as you earn. Like we this, like we mentioned earlier, charge underchargeable income. If you are earning income as a sole trader or an individual, you are assessed to tax under pay. Pay as you earn, which we have explained, which as we have illustrated, uh, sorry, as we have shown in the the applicable tax rates. Number one is to get a salary breakdown schedule. How do you get a salary breakdown? We call it payroll. And under that payroll, particular payroll, sorry, I, is there anybody who does not understand how a payroll looks like? Please, I want you to, so that I can move further. Please unmute and let me hear. I want a feedback. Hello? So like, like what, is there anybody among us who does not understand? Okay, hello? Okay, like? um, okay. Hey, that we, um, the name, the name of the staff at times, the salary basic salary and other incentive so from there they will be from from the bht 
de ou dicto et de ou calculer de euh, pays. Hello, ça, am I am I? Yeah, am I communicating, sir? You are communicating. Thank you. Now, hello, I, sir. Yes, thank you. I asked a question. If anybody here does not understand what a payroll look like, so that we can discuss and talk about it. Okay, since we all know what a payroll look like, now. The key thing you need to get in the course of that payroll, you need to understand first the amount of deductibles. Does the company pay deduct national housing fund? On the on the salary of the staff, is, is it deducting remitting pension? Some organizations don't pay. They don't remit, they don't deduct pension and they don't pay on behalf of staffs. If pension. You understand? It is not going to fall in your position. But dots and all that allowable allows. Allowable allowance is going to form part of the deductions. Now, some organization in the means of computing this bill, some will pay the gross value. Some organization break it big, some break it into other allowance. Some break it into housing, transport, and medicals, and the rest. And for the sake of this, once most of the, there's no law that that's regulated what a company policy should look look like when he wants to prorate the want to the basic the the housing the transport Why? Yes. can you mute please can you please mute everybody please thank you there is no there's no tax uh tax law that has that is regular Forty-eight percent. Some organization will use fifty-five percent, depending on what they feel their policy is all about. Now, once you are able to get this, you sum it up. Some peak gross, like I said, they will put eight percent on their. 8%, the applicable tax rate that is, sorry, pension rate that is applicable to that staff, they deduct 8% on it. To get their deductible allowance. Are you with me? You also go back to other allowance like NHF that is deductible, to other allowance by law, as enshrined by law, to be deducted. From there, 
the get, the tax, the taxable income. You minus what you get from your gross. It leaves you with your taxable income. Don't forget, there's a 2% on your consolidated relief. 2% on gross plus. So once you are able to do that, that's a, another relief under the pay acts plus 200,000, whatever. They are going to be also added to that allowance. Upon deducting, then you will now bring over on the taxable income that is available to you. You will now go back, step three, to check the tax rate. Please don't forget this explanation. I won't explain again when we start practicing this. When we start showing illustration of this, I won't explain it again. Please take note. You now check the tax rate applicable to your taxable income. Once you check the tax rate, if the amount available to that person is for the year, is one, one million naira after your deductions, allowable. Deductions. You will now check applicable tax rates at 7% of the first 300,000. Are we together? 7% of the first 300,000. We give us, sorry, let me use the calculation so, to check. You also can check if we have 1 million. We have started our demonstration now. So that 1 million Naira, if you have 7% of 1 million Naira of the first 300,000, what is it? That's 21,000. Are we together? I want to respond at this point. Are we together? Yes, we are. Now, it gives you 21,000. Please take note of the 21,000. I want you to take note of the 21,000. Now, if you minus 1 million from, from 300,000, how much do you have left? Um, seven hundred thousand. You have seven hundred thousand. Take note yeah. of that seven hundred thousand. So the next, the next rate applicable. What's the next rate applicable? Eleven percent. If you are following, me, what's the next rate applicable? Eleven percent. Eleven percent. Now eleven. Eleven percent. 11% is applicable. Then at another 300,000. So you now give me 11% times 300,000. What, what do you have? 33,000. 17%. 11%. 11, not 33,000. Thank you. Thank you. Take note of that thirty three thousand. Now, seven hundred thousand minus thirty three thousand. Sorry, minus three hundred thousand. How much? Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Hundred thousand available to you. Yes. Now, the next tax rate is what? 15 percent. 15%. Thank you.
at the first 500,000. Now, I want to ask a question. Our balance is how much? 400,000. And the tax rate says that passes stage is on the next 500,000. So if we don't have up to 500,000, we multiply that 15,000, 15% 15 by that 400,000. What do we have? 60,000. Thank you. We have 60,000. Are you with me? Now, when you add all this money together, what do you have? 114,000. Thank you. 114,000. Now, that is the PAY expected from this man after all necessary allowable deductions. Do we get what I'm saying? Yeah. The year. Don't forget for the year. Now, what you need to know for the month is to now know what he will be remitting monthly if his income remains at that amount. You deduct it by 12. What do we have? One one four thousand divided by twelve. What do we have? We have nine thousand five hundred monthly on his PAY. We get that. Yes. Thank you. Everybody can you unmute and let's move on. I want to believe when we start demonstrating this with this illustration. We have been able to understand that we have we get a salary breakdown schedule. We calculate the total taxable income. We check the tax rate applicable. And we calculate the actual tax payable. One million, and we are able to discuss that using the applicable tax rates to establish the tax payable. So, moving on, remittances and due dates. The payee tax return must be filed by the following due dates. Don't forget, we are still talking about individuals. Individuals which self, which include self-employed person, individuals on direct assessment and high net worth individual must file the payee return of the preceding year before March 31st every year. Are we together? Now, let's move on. Let me explain the meaning of high net worth. High net worth are an individual director's business owner whose income is above a particular threshold. As presumed by the tax authority, relevant tax authority, they categorize them under high net worth with a particular threshold of income. They are categorized under high net worth. 
So that's why you have it, I network. People from the word network, I. It means people that are earning a higher income. So moving on. Employers filing on behalf of their employees must ensure to file their yearly payee tax returns before January 31st of each year. Don't forget that remittances are typically made by employers on B deductions, quotes. This deduction that was calculated, that is deducted from the government employee, salaries, remunerations, wages, or whatever, must be remitted on or before the 10th day of the next month, of the month, after the month of deductions. Moving forward further, NRC means non-resident companies operating in Nigeria are expected to make remittances for payee before the 21st of every month. Are we together? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the penalty and interest. In the aspect that individuals do not remit, in the aspect that these individuals do not remit, then what happened to them? Then, as enshrined in law, relevant tax law applicable, business owners, individuals, employers, and non resident companies, NRC, who fail, failing to meet the deadline for the personal pay as you earn tax filing and remittance will be subjected to the following penalties. One, of 10 cents of amount due plus check penalty. Now, please take note, between 15% and 21%, before 2023, June, don't forget, this rate was as at the existing and prevailing Central Bank of Nigerian rates. If you recall, So before it fluctuates between 15% and 21% in line with the previous um, prevailing bank CBN interest rates. But as of now, the rate is at 23%. Also, on conviction, Upon conviction, if they fail to file, on conviction, the guilty parties are subjected to the following penalties. I had a company who I represented at the LIRS. He failed to file his annual return. For a particular year, I guess 2019 or thereabouts, or 2020. I don't, I, I, yeah, 2019. It was penalized to the tune of 500,000 for failure to file. 
They searched for his address. They couldn't get him on time. After a series of notice, they took him to court. And he was penalized. 500K. So, on, on an individual's, it is 50,000. On employers, 500,000 naira. Also, a person who fails to file a return shall be liable a person who fails to file its shall be liable to a fine of 5,000 5, naira and a further sum of 100 naira for every day during which the failure continues or imprisonment of six. A partnership business is a partnership. Two or more people come. This partnership business, they, they share ownership and don't forget on like sole proprietor. A sole proprietor is practically the decision maker. He shares profit alone. He takes decision alone. But in this account, partners, they share losses together, profit together, sometimes also share the work and responsibility together. Though some partners are sleeping partner, some partner could be mm, uh, what do you call them? Be dormant partners. Yes, some partners be dormant, but they are partners in the firm. So when it comes to sharing the profit, they are they share. So. I want you to also remember that a partner is so liable to pay tax to the relevant states where he resides during the year of assessment, residency acts. Partners are taxed on a preceding year basis and expected to file tax return within 90 days of the end of the fiscal year. That is by the 31st of the March preceding. That's accounting year. So I want to believe that's explicit enough. I want to move to. With the personal income tax in the form of a partnership business, you will need to include any of the following earnings as applicable to the individual. Salary, wages, professional fees, 
like Mr. Money, you know, some, some organizations that you call. Result for could give him put him on retainership. Employment allowances. Now, if your organization your business, you are in a partnership with partnership, partnership business, and that business buys you a car. They pay for your uh, for the house you reside. There are other emoluments that is attributable to the position to that partnership position you hold. It is applicable. Are we together? Any other profit or gain made from employment, which may include workplace compensation. Some organization, some organization give you workplace compensation. Some organization give, don't do that. They give you bonuses. Some organization, you get, you earn premium. Some organization, they have various benefits that their partners are eligible to. If you look at other firms, all these big, big fours, big eights, their partners enjoy particular benefits. Any prerequisite given, granted or allowed by any person, applicable, any profit or gains made from the employment, which may include what I have talked about, workplace bonuses, Mr. Money, please, let me scroll, thank you, workplace compensation, bonuses, premium and other eligible benefits, any prerequisite given, granted or allowed by any person. Whether it's on a temporary engagement or a permanent engagement. So far it falls under this designation, it will be chargeable. Now, any amount of expenses incurred by the employee during the performance of their duty, is chargeable. Now, so allowable deductions. Now, these are expenses that are incurred necessarily. Now, in the course of the previous class, Mr. Omoni and Mr. Gwemiga talked about rain uh, pos position, conditions, which must be established for the purpose of producing. It must be holy, holy, it must be necessary, it must be reasonable. And it must be exclusively towards that particular transaction and the business. These allowable expenses are exempted from payee. Sorry, I want to deviate. 
I want to deviate. I recalled, please. In the previous uh, discussion, in the previous examples, sorry, instead of talking about allowable deductions, I was talking about disallowable. When I was talking about when I was talking about uh, deductions that are applicable to a uh, to a sole proprietorship, sorry. I was giving the example of um, disallowable expenses. Sorry. I will go back to readdress that. Sorry. Sorry. Instead of talking about allowable deductions, I was talking about disallowable. Sorry. We talked about interest of an organization, interest on borrowing for the business purpose. Sorry. I was talking about the disallowable. Please. I will go back to that. The National Health Insurance Scheme, as enshrined in the Personal Income Tax Act, when you or an organization contributes to these registered companies that the government has elected and has given uh, an exemption for, once you find out your organization is remitting, as in giving out or making contribution to them, just understand that it is allowable. If you are making contribution to the National Health Insurance Scheme, contribution to the National Pension Scheme, life assurance premium for the tax payer and their spouse, gratuities, national housing fund, like I talked about, owners occupied accommodation, related loans and mortgage. Loans, as in owners occupied accommodation that is paying loan on, more like BIK, deducting that is deducted from his money, earnings. Personal deduction, deductions like charitable contribution, health care expenses, and uh, medical insurance premiums. Personal tax allowance like consolidated relief allowance that I talked about. Where we talked about 2% of your gross plus 200,000 as applicable. Now, any other business deductions? Be any business deductions that fall under these allowable deductions? Interest on borrowings for business purposes. Rent and premiums on land and building used for income generated activities. Now, I digressed a bit to disallowable expenses. When I got to this repair rent and house, housing, don't forget that a withholding is applicable on rent. But Mr. Money, Mr. Money, please let me scroll up to that part. Do you care be noted? Which side? What, what this place is saying, please note this. Rent and premiums on land and building that you use for income generated activities. What this place is saying is that don't forget. 
that's if that business is owned solely by the company if the business is not is solely owned by the company and is not on lease as i've said in earlier in the illustration on mr money and another company and the likes on the account of Mr. Money and the likes, he is assessed to the withholding on that amount of rent. But he is liable when on such a, this company, the rent and premiums on the land and the building. He solely is and is used for generating income activities. Going further, repairs and maintenance expenses for income generation purpose. There is in, a, in the Finance Act. I will lay my hands on it. I think I read it a particular time. I'm going to, I'm going to go back on it in the before the end of this class, and I'm going to pick one or two things, and I'm going to talk more on this on that aspect. Repairs and maintenance expenses for income generation. Business and professional subscription costs. Don't forget, if this business subscription is not attributable to the business or profession of the industry the business is playing on, it is desalable. It is only on the account that the business is and professional subscription is related to the business. An additional 20% of gross income is also allowed as a deductible. I have talked about it. So let's move on. Determination of tax partners' taxable income. In a nutshell, the income of the partners derived from the partnership is calculated by summing up one, salary or commission paid to the partners, interest of capital investment in the partnership by partners, leave or recreational passage enjoyed by the partner and charged to the partnership account. See, please take note of this place. The interest on capital invested in the partnership by the partners. Two, three, leave or recreational passage. Enjoy. If a partner travels abroad and he comes back to the country and he puts the bill on the partnership account, in discussing more of how to determine how to determine the share of profit put to a partner. One, the net profit or loss of the partnership must be adjusted. I want you to know that there's a difference between accessible profit and adjusted profit. An accessible profit, when you start adding back desalable expenses, becomes adjusted profit. This is made, this adjustment is made by adding back to the net profit or loss all desalable expenses that is not found that deviate from what we have just discussed earlier on and all reports taxable income as enshrined under the Personal Income Tax Act. Two, deduction 
from the net profit or loss. You must, you must deduct from the net profit or loss all reported non-taxable income and, how, and allowance expenses. Allowable expenses. Now, all expenses that you find that has been listed in what we discussed earlier on must be deducted. Upon deducting it from the applicable adjusted, once you have added back, adjusted this added back the disallowable expenses, you have your adjusted profit. You must also deduct your non-taxable income uh, and allowable expenses under Peter. Three, the adjusted profit or loss of the partnership will now be splitted. Once you have done the, the carried out the first and two step, the adjusted profit or loss of the partnership is then split between the partners according to the agreed profit or loss sharing. Please note, expenses such as domestic or private expenses, partners was coming home from work and felt let me enjoy my life a little. And a branch at a very nice tree. He, he had a fine meal. They charged him. On his way out, he saw a karaoke center. He had a nice karaoke. When he was also going out, wow, you saw another a nice lawn where you could relax and listen to music and have an accrued and other expenses, paid for other expenses. Different from the business or is domestic expenses that is not covered under allowable expenses. Capital withdrawn, loss recoverable, under insurance, rent or cost of repair of premises not used in producing income. Taxes on income or profits levied in Nigeria all as well within double taxation jurisdiction like I mentioned earlier. And further payments to pension, provident savings, widows, orphan, orphans funds, not approved under the Joint Tax Board and as enshrined as we earlier read, plus depreciation, Weary and tears of assets. Some reserved out of profit are liable expenses, deductible while computing partner tax liability. Also, the applicable tax rates, like we discussed earlier, after we must have fulfilled the three steps above, after we must have shared their profits in the partnership ratio, in the agreement, this is what we will use to compute applicable tax rates on that amount of partnership on that partnership after you must have shared their ratio. After all adding back allowable expenses, sorry, allowable expenses, yes. Sorry, disallowable expenses, called disallowable expenses, and adding and deducting, deducting allowable expenses. 
the schedule of chargeable income and the tax rate of tax to be paid by small business are as follows, which we have discussed earlier on. Please let's scroll on. So this is the applicable tax rate. Now, I've gone a step further to highlight steps to partners personal income taxation. And I say we need this. Take notes. We will always need this in our discussion in a, when we start testing, when we start working, applying all these things that we have taking time to discuss. Let's move on. One, identify net profit or loss or partnership Two, add all non-allowable expenses and unreported taxable income. Three, deduct non-taxable income and allowable expenses not deducted. Three, step one to three would give the adjusted profit or loss. Please take note. I've been making emphasis on this. I've read this earlier on, if you recollect. You first need to identify the net profit and loss of the partners. Add all non-allowable expenses. You will add back. And unreported taxable income. All unreported income, as at the time of uh, reporting, must be added back. Three, deduct non-tax stable income and allowable expenses not deducted. Step one to three would give the adjusted profit. Now, Number five, you deduct all private expenses, which I did, I earlier took time to emphasize on. Deduct all private expenses and money given to each partner from the partnership profit and distribute to each partner's account as income received from partnership. Do you get what I was emphasizing earlier? <coughs> Excuse me. Do you get what I was emphasizing earlier? Where I read that depreciation and uh, other past domestic and private expenses of the partners will go to individual private accounts, partners' accounts. It must be adjusted on the individual, each individual partners. Then you will now share. The remaining deduct all private expenses and money given to each partner from the partnership profit and distribute to each partner's account as income received from partnership. Six, share the remaining adjusted profit between the partners in the profit and loss sharing formula. After sharing the profit, After the adjusted profit between the partners, you must refer back to the profit sharing. Profit sharing as stipulated in the partners' agreement. Then you share the profits with them. So let's move on. Deduct loss carry over by each partner from the result of step five to six. You deduct each partner's share of the capital allowance for the partnership. I think this is explicit. Then once you follow the steps, you apply all the tax rates to this income. Incorporated trustees, we move to the next one, incorporated trustees. Now, incorporated trustees involves any community of persons bound together by customs, religion, kinship, or nationality, or anybody or association or person established for any religious, educational, literary, scientific, social development, cultural, sporting, or charitable purpose. I won't dwell more on this. I understand that the notes will be make, made applicable, uh, made available to everybody who demands it. Now, I want to move to tax offered. It is key to note that 
the organization that falls under the unincorporated trustees, like church, schools, and NGO, don't pay tax. Please note, they don't pay tax. But they are expected to file CIT in line with Section 55 of Company Income Tax Act, CITA. And the returns will include or will involve one audited financial statements, tax and capital allowance computation, a formal statement containing the amount of surplus from every source for the relevant tax year. Now, further to the above, NGOs under this platform under the, are registered under the incorporated trustees. If you want to understand, I want to believe that um, I don't want to talk about registration of NGOs. Mr. Money, you will undo that. And in, I think Mr. Bemiga talked about that in brief. So further to the above, NGOs are also required to deduct withholding tax. But note, the deduction is on payments. They are not expected to pay tax, but they are required to deduct. This deduction is on payment for contracts awarded to suppliers. Don't forget that withholding tax is deducted at source. And contracts and contract and contractors from suppliers and contractors. And they are to remit the tax to the relevant tax authority as applicable. In the, and also in the currency of their transactions. Now, in clear times, you deduct withholding from payments and remit same to the FRS or LIRS before on, on the due dates. Also, they are liable to to personal income tax. The profit of an NGO from approved act activity, except profits derived from a trade or business carried on by the NGO, are accepted from personal income tax in line with section 19, one, section one. And paragraph 13 of the third schedule of the personal income tax. You can re make reference to that, refer to that in your further inquiry. However, the income earned by individual promoters and employees of the NGO, including salaries, emoluments, fees, remuneration, or benefits in kind paid to trustees, guarantors, and directors are liable to personal income tax. Therefore, NGOs are required to deduct the applicable taxes on such income, the currency of the transactions. I won't talk about CGT much. Mr. Gwemiga has expressly talked about that. So I'm moving on. Capital gain tax. Please, I refer you to section 26 of the capital gain tax for any relevant exemption, exemptions on gains accruing to NGOs from the disposal of chargeable assets on, from capital gain tax. So I'm moving forward. VAT, the VAT Act and the Finance Act provide clarifications on the applicable of VAT on the activities of the NGOs and their obligations. Note, good purchase by NGOs for use in humanitarian donor projects are zero rated in line with VAT Act. However, where an NGO purchases goods that are not directly used in that regard, VAT will be applicable on such transaction accordingly. Also, NGOs are required to pay VAT on services procured on
Value-added tax act. Value-added tax act. For further inquiry, please refer to the VAT Act and the Finance Act. NGOs. NGOs. They are required to serve accounts for the VAT on taxable goods and services supplied by non resident ventures, vendors, or persons not liable to charge VAT under the VAT Act. NGOs are required to charge VAT on all supply of taxable goods and services and remit the tax to the FRS in line with the provision of the VAT Act. NGOs are required to file VAT returns on or before the 21st day of every month in line with the provision of section 15 of the VAT Act. Also, the fiscal policy 2023 insisted that agents of government charged with the responsibility of withholding VAT from source. Please take note of this place. There's a difference between VAT on, on, on sales or transaction and VAT withheld. Please note, on VAT on sales, every 21st day of every month, as applicable, you file. But VAT withheld in line with the fiscal policy 2023 that was sus suspended, then later reintroduced actively, yes, in effect in September, for August the deduction is required and is expected. So in addition, NGO must maintain accurate record of their employees and books of account stipulated under the Estand Law and Companies Allied Matter Act 2020. Failure to comply with any of the prescribed prescription, prescribed requirements, we attract appropriate sanctions as provided in the relevant act. Mr. Money, can we move on? Now, I have a deviation. Mr. Money, please, I need two seconds, please. Thank you. I have a deviation, but this deviation is um, coming from, from some other, some introduction in the tax before I move to limited liability companies in this regard. I'm sorry I'm, re I'm digressing, but I just want to explain further that if we recall that that before the advent of the Finance Act, I just want to deviate. Income on educational institution, which falls under incorporated trustees. Engaging in educational activities, which as public characters were exempted from company income tax. Please take note. Under section 23, subsection one, part C of CETA. But at the introduction of the Finance Act 2021, The amended section omitted educational activity, amended the omitted, omitted educational activity as list of activities exempted from CIT.
and in line with this, it should be it should be good to say that the same section of the Company Income Tax Act provides for exemption for tax of the profit of any company engaging in ecclesiastical, charitable, or educational activities of a public character. In so far, such profits are not derived from a trade or business carried on by such company. Now, this, according to this section, it established two conditions. Which all these companies that falls under these incorporated trustees, NGOs, uh, educational sector, or who carry out a charitable organization or ecclesiastical uh, form of uh, like churches and all the likes, fall under the number one. It sets out condition which must jointly be met for the profit of such institution to be sustained. Please, I need you to note, under this, there's a deviation. If you go and read the introduction, the, the, the Finance Act that I just mentioned, I'm just trying to read that part to you and explain what it means. Now, there's a deviation now. It says the this form of organization Activities must be of a public character. Two, the profit must not be derived from a trade or business carried on by the organization. Now, this requires that. I want you to know the deviation that the first condition has not been so straightforward. The Absence of a definition for public character in CETA has led to many disputes between taxpayers and other organizations involved. Now, for tax cases, you can review American International School versus FRS. You can review also BCIS and FIRS in your in your course of study. Please, I need to move on. Now, limited liability company. Now, let me go to illustration table. A limited liability company is illustration table two, is categorized according to the Finance Act. Now, from the table two above, Small companies are categorized as companies with annual gross turnover below 25 million. Don't forget, medium-sized companies have annual gross turnover of 25 million. Three, above and above, but below 100 million. While large companies are those with annual gross turnover of 100 million and above. Now, as it, as it relates to SMEs, with the above illustration too, you should be able to now state that, to understand that where a small organizations fall into. Now, any company with less than Twenty-five million naira turnover so, to pay tax. Two. 
Two, no CIT payment on the condition of, of the company files on the condition that the company files its annual tax return on the account that the company fail on the account that the company failed to file its return before the deadline, it will lose its exemption from CIT. Three, no EDT, education tax is payable. Now, as to exemptions and allowable deduction. Register for tax. Now, exemptions is only applicable to companies with gross turnover not exceeding 25 million at the end of the fiscal year. Hello, are, are you there, sir? Can you hear me? It's you, sir. I can hear you. Mr. Mr. Mopalaji, can you hear me? Are you there? Sir, you can't you can carry on, sir. This is Shagun. Okay. Um, it is, sir. All right, so I think um, maybe he's having issues with the network. Let me just, uh, he's about to round up, but let me just uh, complete what he was saying. So I think he stopped at the, so let me continue from here. That's SME also remits the following um, taxes to the state government. That is um, business premises levies. <laughs> There is any business premises levy, you are expected to remit it to the states, to the state government, and then we also have penalties for non-filing too. I think he mentioned about penalties for non-filing in his earlier um, presentation, so I won't really dwell much on this because this is the same thing um, he mentioned. He just elaborated it here. You know, so non-filing at twenty five thousand for the first month, and then subsequent month, you pay five thousand naira each month, according to the prevailing exchange or interest rates. So for that also, late filing at twenty five thousand for the first month, and then five thousand for subsequent subsequent month, subsequent month. So for the payment of tax. Everybody is expected to um, pay their tax to the relevant tax authority. You are expected to pay their tax to the relevant tax authority. And when you do not pay or when you do not file, like for instance now, for self-assessment on or before 31st of March every year, the following year, you must have filed your self-assessment or your direct assessment. That's most, most especially when you are using the government financial here, or you are using on or before, if it is a new business that is just commencing, the first 18 months you are expected to file. You know, same thing applies to um, company income tax and all other relevant, relevant tax. So we have come to the end of uh, this presentation. And um, at this, I believe um, we have all gotten values from yes, sir. But I have a so question. You, I have, so a if you have qu questions now. Please, you can ask your question very quickly. Okay, can you hear me? but sir, how we look maybe when yeah, I can hear you, I can hear you, sir. Okay, I can hear you, sir. But sir, I'm thinking maybe, maybe like, sir, 
like a weekend or so maybe when you can call account because like i can see some, some people who have issue with accounting so all these are account i am i am accounting except for accountant and like maybe you should maybe you should start the training also maybe it, like we can maybe after you are through with this taxation maybe you can kick start that one also to just helping some people sir okay thank you very much for that um that comment so we we do that um if you are okay. you in our whatsapp group page the general whatsapp group yes sir okay so we are going to do that uh maybe like you said we also have more trainings coming up after this tax training and um, we'll be doing okay. um trainings relating to financial statement preparation using excel and then um, okay. we'll also be doing advanced excel for beginners then advance for people who have gone through the beginning and then want to, you know, increase their okay, skills sir. on yeah, how okay, to sir. do Excel and all other, some prominent training also that will be coming up because we also have trainings on this um, tax because um, Mr. Mobolaja, Mr. Mobolaji will be teaching you how to practically do these things on FIRS tax programs and also the e-tax system you know so we have trainings coming up very quickly on all of these things because we want to make it very very practical you know and i believe in his explanation so far he has made it very very simple and practical for everyone to understand all what he is saying because we know that there are some students here who are not accounting graduates so we have to break it down for them to you know um, understand this system so we'll be having more training coming up after the just stay tuned to the page stay tuned follow us on different social media platforms linkedin um, instagram and also you can also check our youtube pages for more notifications on that we'll definitely do that okay thank you sir you're welcome sir all right Ed, do we have any other questions from anyone very quickly Okay, um, I think Mr. Mobolaji is back. Mr. Mobolaji, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I think he's still trying to join. Um, so any question from any other person? Hello? Yeah, good evening. Oh, sorry, I've been struggling with this. Sorry. I okay, understand. can you hear me now, Mr. Mo? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah sorry. Okay, so Just... can you hear me? Can you hear me loud and clear? I can hear you loud. All right. So um, I noticed I noticed you were not in the meeting, uh, maybe due to network issues. So, and um, you were about to round up your section. So I've done that actually. I've completed it, thinking that um, okay, we're having a bit of challenge, you know. So I've okay. Where are you up. now? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with everything. This is the last. I'm done okay. with. Uh, this is now, the last place. So I'm just waiting for questions. See if anyone has questions before you came on board. Okay. B. You can go ahead, sir. Okay. Now, I want us to Companies in the threshold of uh, of an SME of a small scale that an organization has a status of twenty five million today, and by next year it become a medium, and in few years after, as a result. 
for business decision or whatever. The whole bank status. So you to note that that tax plan account to the parts where I want to talk about tax evasion and avoidance. Tax evasion is not sorry, tax avoidance is not criminal law. It's just taking making use of the loopholes tax law. A tax evasion is what's criminal. Yeah, and I want to say that in the course of of this organization to maintain this SME start, uh, sorry, this small start, small size status. Rather than disclose their full turnover, they try to report on that report. I want you to take note that it comes with the stringent penalties as enshrined in the tax law. Now, but most organizations, because in tax audits, I don't have time to talk to, I wanted to take us further into tax audit as a result of all this that I've explained and how tax planning under this SME, how to tax plan under this XME as provided by the books and how not to tax plan are you getting me? Now, some organizations, like somebody on the platform asked a question for an, for an SME operating as individual. He said, there is a palliative, they gave a palliative in reporting PAYE. They, somebody is earning 100,000. As a result of the increase in transport cost, the organization could not give them to operate on a remote ground. The organization decided that, okay, I will give you transport palliative, but I won't pay tax on it. The organization now decided to cut it. And the person decided to show that as expenses. Somebody said he should use it as other as other expenses. Now, if you classify it on under other expenses, there's a tax exposure already. In, this, in talking about this further, I will still talk about it, but let me take one or two questions from anybody who wants to hear questions. I've actually dwelt on, dwelt on the previous ones for so long. Hello, does anybody have a question? Yes. Yeah. When we are talking about the sole proprietorship, you talk about yes. vacation, Vocation, not vacation. I talked about vocation. Are you there? I talked about vocation, vocation. Yes, vocation and other income. You now said that they are yes. chargeable. My question is that other what type type would this uh, uh, income be uh, taxed? Is your other pay? Okay. Now, like I discussed earlier on, are you getting me? You first thing you need to know is under chargeable income, all the income of that sole proprietorship or partnership, all the income is global income. The income either it generated it on the uh, out of the business is major business 
all the income attributable to him in that course, uh, in that fiscal year, is what he will report. Now, the one, the income that is attributed from his business will be. Shown. Then this, which will be shown is report in income reports or schedule that will be attached to documents in the course of the audit. In the course of reporting, do you get what I'm saying? Do you yes, get sir. me? Hello? Y yes. Do you get sir. what I'm saying? Yes, the person who has the question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't forget, once you are able to identify chargeable income, all the income as listed, once you have been able to identify it, I want to tell you that you are good to go. Or you are able to first identify what is chargeable as his income. You are able to understand the allowable and non-allowable expenses. You know that you are supposed to add back and deduct. Once you are able to do that, then you are able to you put your tax rate and you're able to determine what is supposed to remit as per tax, as per is paying. Any other question? Hello? Hello? So Hello? Uh, we are here with you. Hello, now, sir. Any other, with you, sir. any other question? Anybody with questions? Okay, I want to believe now, there is no other question. Yeah, so let's... Um, okay. Just, uh, Mr. Amalaja, just, um, I think nobody has any other question for we to take. So we okay. can just um, try to round it up so we can... Um, Today. Okay, 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 okay. Now, in rounding up what I, in rounding up this training, I need you to understand that first, the essence of calculating all this thing is based on the privilege, tax privilege that we are able to, we have access to, to involve inclu our inclusion in the tax process by the FIRS and the relevant tax authority. Now, upon doing this, you have self-assessed yourself. That's what you need to know, that's what they call or save assessment, irrespective of filing to FRS or filing to LIRS or SI or any states, you have sex assess yourself. Then the tax authority will now look at what, what you have filed. They will now do what we call the first thing they will do is desk review. They will now write a letter to you. Based on all these things that you have done, they will pick line items that they feel they want additional documents on. They will now ask you to give them documents. That's the first step. That desk audit review is based on the things that you have first given them. Don't forget that this first step is the first step to tax. To tax. Go back and review what you have done. Then you'll be able to first be able to undo the specific organizations and their tax. Then by the time we are able to come, I'm able to come your way again. Or if I have any other opportunity, I don't want to be explaining. I want to do us to do practicals. Why? One. We are going into how, from scratch, 
once you are able to calculate, we will demonstrate how to first compute this thing as I've shown you. Two, how do you file it? How do you assess it on the tax, on the e-tax? FIRS tax pro max. Some of you, some organizations have withholding credit notes, but you don't know how to assess it, how to print it out. I wish we will demonstrate that to you once we come your way again. Thank you. And God bless everybody who have taken their time to listen to this teaching training. And I wanted to say that oh, it will be more interactive in the next time we come our way. And I want to apologize for the inconsistency in the in the signal. And I when next to meet, if there's an opportunity to meet again, we will go into practical. There will be no room to, to be explaining all this uh, all the notes. I want to say thank you. And God bless everybody. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Mo. I call him Mr. Mo. You know, thank you so much for breaking down all this complexity in tax system. Thank you so much for bringing it down to our understanding. Um, I really appreciate your time. It's a privilege having you um, in our midst tonight. And I want to believe that every one of us who have listened to what Mr. Mo have said, uh, I want to believe that we have gotten, at least we have gotten something new, something totally different from what we know um, before. So like he said, more and more trainings like this will be coming up um, at Elite Accounting Professionals. So these are the things we, we, we try to do for professionals. We try to bring trainings like this to make it more practical for you and also to increase your, your experience in the field. Because um, as a professional, you have no excuse for you to say, oh, maybe for instance, you're an accountant, you have no, no excuse for you to say, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to uh, compute. I don't know how to file and all of these process. And that is why we have experts who are in the industry, in different industry, you know, to come across to give us um, trainings, trainings like this. So next month, hopefully by God's grace, um, we are going to start, we are going to do another training and that will come so practical on the tax filing and um, on e-tax and also on FRS tax tax promos, you know, so we'll have a lot of training. So I want to encourage everybody to stay glued to Elite Accounting Professionals on all um, social media platforms. Um, we have a community on WhatsApp that is over 2,000 plus. So if you are interested in joining the community, you can um, send me a message on WhatsApp. Um, I, I can drop my number here um, in case for some of you who don't have who don't have my number, you can send me a message on WhatsApp. And then if paraventure you are in one of the groups that um, we usually share our update, you can easily reach us out. And then you connect with us on LinkedIn, follow us on LinkedIn, on Instagram, um, Elite Accounting Professionals for more updates on trainings. And we also um, carry out, carry out um, accounting um, ICANN lectures. So for some of you that are also preparing for ICANN exam and you are looking for um, a tutor center where you can um, put yourself on the right path and scale your way to success, Elite Accounting Professionals is an avenue for you to do that. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining this training. Um, till we meet again. So like I told you, the last um, episode of this training will be coming up next week same time by 6 p.m. We'll be having another industry expert taking us on the different, um, his own specialty in tax. So I want you guys to stay tuned to this channel and then follow us next week on the same time. So thank you very much, everyone. We'll call it a day tonight. Do enjoy the rest of your week. Bye for now.